Hello, and welcome back to a, another episode of Anatomy with Alex, and our last episode of Anatomy with Alex for 2017. Holy schmoly. Uh, today we're talking about when your legs fall asleep and what the science actually is, like what's happening, why is your leg numb, why does it suddenly start tingling, and what you can do to help avoid that, especially if you're anything like me, um, where I wake up in the middle of the night sometimes and my arms are asleep. It's no fun, right? We all know the feeling. You're in the same position for some time. Maybe you're reading a book or you're sitting on the floor, and then you go to move, but oh! The whole leg is asleep, and then that awful tingling sets in, and it's just like, no fun at all. So, Anatomy with Alex is my weekly show where I teach you anatomy and physiology in ways that are practical and relevant for your life so that you can put them into play right away and maximize your mobility to live pain-free in your body. So let's jump right into it. As always, if you have any questions or comments or you've experienced this too, make sure you drop it down into the comments below, and I will and do my best to answer any of the questions you might have. So thanks for the thumbs up. What is that feeling? Well, it's awful, but what is the name of that feeling of when your leg falls asleep? It's called paresthesia. And paresthesia is from Greek, meaning abnormal sensation, which makes perfect sense for the descriptor of what it actually is. And it can be created by any tweak of a nerve whether that's the funny bone, which is actually your ulnar nerve. Um, Also, hyperventilation syndrome can create this nerve sensation of paresthesia. Panic attacks, which also usually coincide with hyperventilation. Um, And even shingles can create some issues with the nerves uh, because it is an infection of the nerves. And that's uh, the varicella zoster virus, in case you were wondering. Thanks for the thumbs up, you guys. If you're here, let me know um, with either a thumbs up or even just an emoji, your favorite emoji, maybe your most used emoji, so I know you're here. So what causes paresthesia? Well, just through trial and error, we kind of already figured it out. That pressure on an area for an extended period of time um, decreases blood flow, and that's really what's going on. So with the decrease of blood flow, there's less oxygen flowing into the area, which also means there's less nutrients flowing into the area. And this is going to affect the muscles, it's going to affect your fascia, which is not a huge deal. But if there were a long-term decrease of blood flow to an area, um, those tissues would start to die. So it is important to not have that decrease in blood flow last for a super long time, which is why your nerves are the first to say, "Uh uh-uh, I don't like what's going on here. So that decrease of blood flow creates a misfiring of the nerves. So they kind of speak up for the rest of the soft tissues in the area that would also be negatively affected by this lack of blood flow, but can't necessarily speak up for themselves, right? This misfiring of the nerves uh, means that some stop firing altogether, um, others fire erratically, And this scramble is completely misinterpreted by your brain. So it becomes just like chaos in that area with nerves firing out of turn. um, And your brain is just like, what is going on? I don't understand what's going on down there. So you'll feel an array of sensations, which could be warmth, um, numbness, or tingling, any of those. Yeah, Carissa says, so interesting. Thank you for the detailed description. My pleasure. Um, This is a question over on Instagram because I was wondering the same thing. Like, what is going on? And, you know, you need random facts to fill your brain for random facts. I don't know. (laughs) So this array of signals that you get. And curious, is it different for you? My sensation is always first, like, this numbness and tightness. And then after that, the pins and needles sets in. Is it the same for you? Let me know. I don't know if that's just my my deal or maybe you experience that too. But overall, this is a signal from your body to move because that long-term pressure and decrease of blood flow, like I said, um, could potentially create an issue. So it's just this really cool feedback loop. Your brain says, uh, I don't know what's going on, so maybe we should move. And then you just move. It's as simple as that. Um, Now, when you change position, yes, the blood flows back in, but it's not an instant relief of that numbness and tingling, which you have probably felt if this has happened to you. Um, The nerves are still misfiring a little bit, so that numbness and that tingling can 
um, persist for a little bit after um, until balance is restored. So homeostasis comes back and then all is good to go. Now, for most of us, we just experience, um, you know, this temporary numbness and tingling. And like I said, when I sleep at night, um, because I'm a side sleeper, that can create compression here at the front of the shoulder. And that sometimes creates uh, paresthesia in my arm. Um, sitting on the ground, if on your knees for an expanded, extended period of time, that too um, makes my feet fall asleep. And I actually just discovered an interesting one for those of you who do yoga or you like sound baths or meditations. Um, laying on the ground and I had a blanket behind my knees and there is an artery back there um, that I apparently was compressing. So about 40 minutes into my meditation, I wake right up and realize I can't feel my feet, which is not a big deal when you're meditating. You don't really need your feet, um, but it was not fun when I adjusted and the tingling started. Now, paresthesia can also be something chronic which is often due to poor circulation just overall in the nerves um, or some sort of irritation due to inflammation um, like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, or even carpal tunnel. Um, sometimes direct nerve damage can create this chronic paresthesia, um, think frostbite or Lyme disease. Um, and even, and some of you might have experienced this as well, um, the dentist, if you've ever had um, trauma, I mean, <laughs> sorry to put all those dentists out there. I actually really like my dentist. He's my father-in-law. Um, but when you've had dental surgery or even something as simple as, you know, a cavity filling or, or something like that, um, there can sometimes be damage to the nerve during the administration of that um, injection. And so you can have long-term um, numbness. I had a uh, friend who had this numbness in the jaw after I think it was a root canal. And it just, it depends on the nerve and the blood flow there for how long it's actually going to take to recover. So not only if the dentist ac accidentally, you know, pokes the nerve, um, the type of anesthetic that's used can also affect the nerve. Um, so, that's just another side note. But for the majority of us, when it comes to paresthesia and arms and legs and feet and toes falling asleep, um, just move and full sensation should come back. Um, change your positions up, um, you know, set yourself in positions. I wouldn't necessarily say there's one position that is going to prevent your legs or hands or arms or whatever from falling asleep all the time, but movement is good. Now, if you are um, in a situation where you can't necessarily move because you are, well, I don't know, sleeping, um, using props or pillows to position yourself so that your chest doesn't collapse forward, uh, something like a body pillow might be a really good addition uh, to your sleep setup so that you don't let the shoulders round forward like this, um, especially if that is, uh, you know, arms falling asleep and numbness is a constant occurrence. So there you have it all about, thanks for the thumbs up, uh, all about paresthesia and your arms and legs falling asleep. Um, again, let me know if uh, you get the numbness and the tingling and the burning. I wonder if it's different from person to person. I imagine that it is because we are all such unique snowflakes. Um, but this is, again, as I said, our last Anatomy with Alex for 2017. I will see you again in the new year. Ah, and our first anatomy with Alex will be on January 3rd. Um, so I'm taking next week off, you know, because I need a holiday. It's Christmas break. Yeah. Uh, next time on anatomy with Alex, January 3rd, I will be talking or answering the question, why is my hip snapping? So if you do ab exercises and there's that weird thunk or clunk in your hip, I'm going to show you what it is and how you can lessen that to prevent any irritation um, to your body. So make sure you tune in for that. Make sure you share this video if you enjoyed learning about paresthesia. Um, and happy new year, Merry Christmas, happy holidays. I will see you guys next time. All right, take care.